I'm going to jump into the topic of um, kidney tumors, pink kidney tumors, which I also just refer to as job security. Um, because as many of you are aware or may be aware that the field of kidney tumors is expanding at a very high rate um, with both new entities that are going to be included in the WHO, which is coming out this spring, and especially the tumors that have pink morphology, which I think give people a lot of trouble because of morphologic overlap. And really, the truth is about 75% of the kidney tumors that we see in general, um, including obviously benign tumors and malignant tumors, can have pink or eosinophilic morphology. So understanding small nuances and being able to see subtle differences, clinical differences, is really important in developing a differential diagnosis. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, I'm still a morphologist at heart. I do love bio biomarkers, and we do use biomarkers in kidney, um, not infrequently, but I think really forming your differential diagnosis from um, the get-go and picking a handful of stains can be really helpful um, in getting to an endpoint without getting too crazy. And when I think about these tumors, um, I think uh, in general for kidney tumors, I start my differential by saying, uh, is do I think it's cortical-based or uh, medullary-based tumor? So most of these that I'm showing today are cortical-based tumors. So that's one path that I'll sort of split down as I'm making my differential. I'll think about whether it's in a male or a female. Generally speaking, um, uh, most kidney tumors occur in males, but a lot of the new entities occur more frequently in females. So that can be a clue when you're thinking about your differential. And in fact, about three quarters of the cases, these are all real histories I have for you today on these cases, about three quarters of the cases um, uh, today that I'm showing you are actually in females. The other thing is um, uh, size. Historically speaking, people talk about the fact that four centimeters or less is more frequently a benign tumor. Personally, I would say throw that out the window. I can tell you of the 12 cases I have for you today, only one is benign, 11 are malignant, and um, uh, the majority of these, about half of these cases are, are smaller than uh, four centimeters. So I think that's really something you want to be careful about. And the one benign tumor is bigger than four centimeters in this set. So I really don't use size um, at all. So having said that, let's start with the first case. This one is a 73-year-old um, female with a six centimeter renal mass. And really I put this one in just as, if many, in many ways, just as a reference, um, uh, because what I want to show you here, um, uh, you know, classically and historically what we know, the pink tumors that we think about in the kidney are oncocytoma, which is benign of course, and chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. And you know, back 20 plus years ago in the WHO, those were our two pink tumors, but now there's um, a well, well over a dozen of them. So uh, this one here, as you can see, it's a relatively well circumscribed uh, mass um, here, uh, pushing up against the renal capsule. Um, it has a nested to solid architecture with some microcystic formation. And you can see here there's a central scar area with small nested um, uh, epithelial cells. And again, I'm really using this much more as a reference case uh, for the remainder of the cases that we look at. This is the oncocytoma, um, the one benign case that I'll be showing you today. And again, um, not asking a lot of questions just because I want to um, use it as a reference case. And again, as you all are aware, um, small nest, solid nest into an edematous stroma. And really what I'm looking for when I'm making a diagnosis of oncocytoma, which I'm perfectly happy to do by H&E, and I do call this on core biopsies straight up, not infrequently, without hedging the diagnosis, I'm looking for that granular pink oncocytic uh, cytoplasm with a perfectly round nucleus and prominent nucleoli in at least a subset of the cells. And if I have all those features, nested to solid, edematous stroma, this type of cytologic features, I'm happy to call this an oncocytoma uh, and basically move on to the next case. You do need, for pitfall reasons, to be aware uh, uh, that there are some cases of oncocytoma, as is being shown right here in this case, where you can see what looks like 
uh, nuclear atypia. We often refer to this as smudgy um, reactive nuclear atypia, um, maybe a little bit ischemic, but this should not defer you um, on the diagnosis if everything else fits. You can also see um, oncocytomas pushing into the um, perinephric adipose tissue that still remains a benign tumor. What I do not allow for in oncocytomas, you should not see true tumor necrosis. If you had a prior core biopsy in the kidney, there might be some ischemic necrosis, but true tumor necrosis shouldn't be seen. And I don't allow for more than one mitotic figure, basically. If you're seeing multiple mitotic figures, I would think very carefully about your diagnosis and maybe work it up further. These should have, and if you happen to do a MIB, which I don't do, it should be no more than about one or 2% of your tumor cells, being that it's a benign neoplasm. So are there any, um, well, I should ask you, if you were to stain, uh, whether it's, um, all right, I'm looking for my...